your app might be slow because you didn't read the docs. SQS is responsible for almost 20% of Lambda invocations and is the second most popular way to invoke a Lambda function, according to Datadog's State of Service report last year. But if you're not careful, AWS may be throttling your SQS consumers without you even knowing it. So I'm going to spend some money on AWS and show you an example of burning through a backlog of SQS messages so you can see when your Lambda function is being throttled. And you won't make this mistake at home. If you've used SQS and Lambda before, you may assume that the Lambda function is just asynchronously grabbing messages off of the SQS queue when they're ready. And that's what it feels like to use Lambda, but that's not exactly what's happening. The reality behind the scenes is a little bit more complicated. When you subscribe a Lambda function to an SQS queue, AWS provisions an instance of their event source mapping service, and they call them pollers. What they are are a scaled out fleet of workers which long pull on the SQS queue, which you configure, and when messages are available, they will invoke your Lambda function. The pollers are responsible for the concurrency, error handling, retries, and back off, which your Lambda function is responding to. So that Lambda function is a synchronous invocation. If you want to learn more about this, Julian Wood and Chris Greenwood gave a talk about this in 2022, and I'll add the link for it here. All right, so what I've done is create two functions, a producer and a consumer, and the producer is writing messages to SQS, and then the consumer reads those messages. For the sake of this example, the consumer will always take about two seconds to process a message. For this example, we're using a batch size of one, and the idea is to take advantage of Lambda's you know, massive horizontal scaling capability and just see how fast it can burn through all of these records. Our producer code here just pushes 5,000 messages to the queue. It doesn't really matter how long it takes because we're gonna throttle the consumer function so that it can't run until all of the messages have arrived. But I do wanna kind of push everything as quickly as I can because I am getting billed by the millisecond here. So I'm going to go up to the max of 10 messages per send message batch command. And then I'll just do that 500 times in each producer invocation. Uh, and then I'll wrap that in a promise.all and send them all to the queue. The consumer code is where this gets a little bit more interesting. What we're going to do is assume that about 10% of the messages that we process from this queue are going to fail with an error. And the way we're going to do that is by grabbing a random number between zero and nine and seeing if it's five. If it's five, we're gonna just throw an error and the event source mapping will put that message back onto the queue and try it again later. If it comes up with anything else, we'll wait the two seconds to simulate processing and then we'll just return and be done. Okay, so we have pushed our 5,000 messages to the queue or 4,993 approximately. And now it's time to unthrottle our Lambda function and see how fast it can burn through all of these messages. Remember, 10% are going to fail, throw an error, and retry. Okay, here it goes. Unthrottling. All right, we've successfully worked through all of the backlog of messages, and we can see here that it took mm, about 10 minutes, maybe 9 minutes to get through all of these messages. This orange descending curve is the approximate number of messages available, and this blue line all the way at the bottom is the maximum number of concurrent executions that our Lambda function can run we can see that we more or less maxed out at around 55 concurrent executions. Now, that seems pretty low because we just gave it an unreserved concurrency to execute against. So why didn't we scale out any faster? The answer to this question is, of course, in the documentation. Lambda documents a back-off strategy for failed invocations, and specifically, this pertains to SQS, but it does apply to other forms of asynchronous processing. If your function code causes an error, Lambda will gradually back off retries by reducing the amount of concurrency allocated to your SQS event source mapping. If those invocations continue to fail, Lambda will eventually drop that message. To fix this problem, we just need to implement batch item failures, which is a way of telling Lambda and the event source mapping that we weren't able to successfully process one or more items in a batch. The benefit of this partial batch response is that Lambda won't scale down polling when we actually encounter errors with these messages. Instead, it will retry according to our backoff strategy and visibility timeout, but it won't actually downscale our concurrency. And I wanna show you just how big of an impact that has on this example. So what we've done is replace our logic for throwing an error if the random number is five with uh, pushing an item into this batch item failures array if the number is five. 
You can imagine doing this for processing a batch of messages off of your own queue, keeping track of IDs, that sort of thing. But the crux of the problem is the same. We push identifiers into this array, and then we return that to Lambda, telling it that we couldn't process that specific message. So we're no longer throwing an unhandled exception. Okay, let's throttle this function and then send it some messages. All right, it looks like CloudWatch is reporting that we've got all 5,000 messages sitting in queue for a couple minutes. So we can go ahead and unthrottle that function and see how long this takes to process. Okay, so we've unthrottled the function and you can see that we're really quickly ramping up on our concurrent number of executions. And in fact, not all the numbers seem to report to CloudWatch, but you can see it seems to peak at around 324 concurrent functions but the time to burn through these messages is far faster. We're doing the whole thing in just about three minutes and then we'll go from 5,000 messages all the way back down to zero. And we have the same logic. We're still failing on every 10th message or so, but it doesn't matter because we're actually requeuing that message without making the event source mapping throttle the concurrency of our Lambda function. In this trivial example, it's about three to four times faster than the original test, but the point is even more impactful if you're processing large batches of messages at a time and then throwing an error and requeuing the entire batch. It just doesn't pay to not use batch item failures. I should note that this demonstration is taking place on Saturday, November 11th, which is after AWS has announced faster polling scale up for AWS Lambda functions configured for SQS. So, this isn't necessarily a benchmark, but it's a reflection of how the specific error can really trip you up and slow down your functions, even with the newer, faster scaling model. I hope I've convinced you that if you see this code anywhere in your code base, it's a problem, and you should immediately replace it with the partial batch response feature that Lambda already provides for you. Anyway, that's all I have to talk about today. If you like this and you want to see more, leave a comment below and let me know what you'd like to see. Otherwise, feel free to join me live on Twitch and YouTube when I stream this whole process and build this whole thing out and you can laugh at me and make fun of me as I screwed everything up. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.